Damn it, guys, he got me. The motherfucker got me. It's Sai, and he's back for revenge. Well, to be honest, I guess he didn't really do much, but... He tricked me nevertheless, and in fact it was before I made the rant about him, so it's amazing how he managed to do this. So I bought Subnautica because he, he just had such great works for it. He was so into that game and he t completely sold me on the idea. And it's pretty hard not to get sold on the idea of Subnautica because just look at it. You wanna play that shit? You wanna swim with the fishes and... Thing. Actually, what else is there? You collect fucking items and... You farm for for materials underwater. That's not really. That's already where you're losing. I I don't care for that shit. Why did you stick so many goddamn materials in there that you have to collect? What is this? Minecraft underwater? I guess it basically is, but it's so much worse. It's it's so much worse. What a game. So basically, Sai he sold me. Uh, he said that this game was like a survival horror game in disguise. Because everything is completely terrible and everything's trying to kill you and it's this alien ocean that's just full of dangers and it's so scary. And the only thing that I think that's scary about this game is how fucking poorly designed it is. God, look at this game being so fucking beautiful and all along it is just completely style over substance. There's not a single mechanic in this game that works well. Everything is designed completely retardedly and it's completely mind-blowing. Where to begin even? Just every aspect of this game. Okay, let's let's just start. I, I wrote a whole bunch of li a whole list of things that really are tedious about this game and then I wrote another list about all the glitches in this game and the glitches come last and I gotta say in the end I kind of got this extreme Stockholm syndrome for this game and it's it's just got me I guess I just played it all the way to the end I, I even I, I could have played the game much faster if I had played it if I had known what to do but I didn't know what to do because the game doesn't really tell you anything and the entire game is basically about managing inventory, but your your inventory is just really bad, badly designed. It's it's so fucking small, and things that, that, that should be grouped together, they don't stack. So if you collect like 10 mushrooms, you'll have 10 inventory slots taken up with, with one single mushroom each. And it's completely terrible, and you only have so few inventory slots. And and you're gonna play this game completely different than you play any other games because in this game you have absolutely no inventory space. So you're gonna leave everything behind in your escape pod and only take with you what you absolutely need. And you can't go too far away from your escape pod because otherwise you're gonna run into trouble. You're gonna starve to death. You're gonna you're gonna not not have enough water because only in the escape pod at first is where you can distill water for you to drink. So it's all it's all insane. It's all, you're, you're always limited. I mean, I haven't played a lot of survival games before, so maybe it's possible that all the survival games are really shit and terrible and you have no inventory space, but I think this game's alone in a way. I think this is just unique and stupid, but who knows, maybe all survival games are stupid. I don't even know, anyways. Oh god, what have I done? I made a whole hour-long video about a... A game that apparently everyone likes, and I just, I, I just have so many nitpicks. Not even nitpicks. I think, I think some of my points are really good, and it would be good if the game developer saw this and they, they made the game better because of what I said. That would be great, but I guess it's pretty unlikely. And especially, what's my audience gonna think? They're gonna think I'm, I hate this game and it's terrible. Well, it, well, it is, but. They can still enjoy it, I guess. Who could tell what's right and what's wrong? It's a game, I guess, that exists. And people play it and they're pretentious. Or maybe they just give it too much credit, even though it's really bad in some ways. Well, tell me what you saw. Did you like this game? Did you actually like it? Crazy! <laughs> There's another mechanic that's very similar, it's the air mechanic. Because you can stay underwater for less than a minute by default, and then you gotta come back up for air. So you would assume, right, if this was a game that wasn't designed by complete retards, then you would assume that you have some kind of mechanic where you stick to the water surface so you can look out of the water and your, your air refills, right? That's what you would assume. 
but not Subnautica. It should be called Subnausea because it makes me fucking sick. No, what what happens in Subnautica is that you jump out of the water like a retarded dolphin, staying in the air for like two seconds, and then going all the way back down into the water. And if you don't pay attention, you're gonna you're not gonna have your air refilled. So you're gonna jump out again. There's no there's no mechanic for sticking to the water surface. You're always gonna be like bobbing in and out of the water surface as if you were completely retarded. This is not how it works. This is not how physics work. You would be... It would be really simple to stay with the water because you are in the water and you're affected by the same forces as the water. So it would be really simple to stick to the water surface. But not in this game. No, because in this game... You, I, I don't know why. You could... You could Run out of oxygen right under the water surface because your character's too stupid to stick to it. Instead, he, a wave pushes you under water, maybe, and then you, you, you don't come back up again. Or you jump out of the water and you fall back into it, and it's terrible. It's all so stupid. And then the next thing is fish, right? You, your main source of nutrients is gonna be fish. And you catch the fish, you bring it to your, your escape pod to cook it. And then there's another option where you can put salt on it, so it, it keeps longer. And you would assume that this is a game where you have a progression and you get better and better, and you can hunt larger and larger fish, but that's not, that's not this game. You, you can't even kill the larger fish, because you're... I, I don't even know, what, what's the difference? Why can you kill the small ones and not the big ones? Why can you not eat the big ones if you do kill them? Because you can run them over with your submarine and then they're dead, but you still can't eat them because you refuse to eat anything anything that would would be more than a little bite in your mouth. So basically you're constantly forced to eat, uh, to, to hunt for fish because you're gonna run out immediately because you can only have a tiny fish with you. There's lots of huge fish that you could be eating, but you don't eat them. You, you only eat the tiny ones. It's completely silly. Oh wow, I just realized I've completely forgot this one annoyance here that I didn't even write onto the fucking in uh, onto the fucking list. Here it is. Look at this fucking screenshot. What's wrong with this fucking screenshot? Huh? Is it maybe the fucking the mask in front of your face like 90% of the game? Yeah, but what, what, what do you think? That's a great idea, don't you? Why don't we just have the fucking diving mask in front of your face 90% of the time? That's not gonna get annoying. That's not a waste of screen space. No, that's perfectly fine. That's great design, Subnausea. It's really great. <laughs> see, this is terrible. I, can't, I cannot see shit. No wonder no one would do this. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I love having pointless things on my screen that are really annoying me and then it's fucking orange too as if I, as if I was bleeding or something crazy it's like this the worst to call of duty jam oh my god oh what a ah, why did I put this on oh and there's no way to get rid of it it's fucking insane and even if you're in a submarine, you, you, well, I guess in the submarine it gets rid of it, but then you got the, the things of the submarine blocking your your, fa your your face, your HUD, that's it. That's slightly less annoying, I guess, but it's still terrible. Like, every, way, every single thing about this game is annoying. You got the sea glide, which is also really big. It's like a, a fast way to... It's like a, a, a disembodied turbine that you can have in front of you so you can move slightly faster and it's got this huge hologram as well as the the, the diving mask and the hologram is really annoying it just shows you all the surrounding walls and it's been it's like completely useless 90 percent of the time and <laughs> the way you toggle it off is so stupid as well because it's got like four states because it's it shares a button with the flashlight which is another thing the flashlight Oh my god, the flashlight, I... This was actually a later point in my list, but I moved it up so I can talk about it now seamlessly. Isn't that great? Except for me just pointing it out isn't seamless, but whatever, here we go. The flashlight is a tool. 
Isn't that great? Don't you love it how the flashlight is a tool and it looks like a gun? So if someone sees the game, it actually looks like there might be action in it, but really it's just a shitty flashlight that is designed in the worst way possible, so that it takes up not only an inventory slot, but also a, a quick select slot, and it, this allows you from using any other tools at the same time, or with light, so it's just completely retarded. So basically the flashlight is one of the first things you, you're gonna build or or you, you're given it, I don't remember. Either way, the flashlight goes in a slot, and you can only have five slots, which is, by the way, completely retarded, and that means you have five slots of tools. So you got the flashlight, the scanner, the seag light, the laser cutter, there's, there's like ten different tools, but there's only five quick select slots. And you're gonna need these tools at, at different times, and it's a real pain in the ass to change the quick select. And what's the worst thing is that you can't use the flashlight when you use any other tool, because the flashlight is a tool and you're fucking retarded. So basically whenever you, you want to scan something, which by the way you're going to be scanning stuff all the time, because you've got this pointless tool that does nothing but scan something, and it makes you put away the flashlight, you're going to... Go deep into a, a dark cave and you're gonna pull out your scanner and that means that you you put your flashlight up your ass and that means it's off. You can't even put it to the side where it still shines. No, it, you put it away completely. So you in pitch black with that one tool that you're now gonna use. But good luck because now you're gonna scan that fish that's gonna fl fucking swim away and... And it's all dark and he's gonna swim away in the pitch black. <laughs> and you can't go fast either, because your sea glide is another tool. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> and then another tool that you got is the laser cutter, which by the way it took me forever to find the the blueprint for the laser cutter. And it's a completely piece of shit tool that, that has like only one single use. The laser cutter, I assumed, would be, allow me to, to cut open all those boxes of, of loot that, that aren't open. But no, the laser cutter is only for opening doors that have a black smudge on them. And it doesn't even make sense. Why can you open those, but you can't open the, the other locked doors with the laser cutter? It, it's so silly. It's just so completely stupid, and then it takes up an inventory slot, and there's like 10 different doors in the entire game that you need to cut open. And there's not even anything good behind them usually. So it's just completely stupid. Why don't you just make it so if you have the laser cut in your inventory, it automatically opens the doors for you. Instead of having to, to waste time fiddling with your inventory, putting it on a quick select slot for, for 10 seconds so you can open this door and then put it put back whatever else you had on that quick select slot. I'm, I'm just so incredibly baffled by how stupid this game is designed. <laughs> I wonder how people, I wonder how Sai played this game and he didn't think to himself, everything about this game sucks, what am I doing here? How, how is it possible? I guess it just goes to show what a pretentious asshole he is that he would buy into this pretentious game being all stupid. And I guess I I bought into this game too. I, I played this game all the way to the end and then I kept playing it even though there wasn't anything there. The late game sucks. There isn't anything to it. And I just kept playing it because, I don't know, it was really fun at the time. But also really painful. Really, really painful. So... The next point on my list is animals and plants that attack you specifically. There's like a plant that shoots spikes at you. Why? Why would there be a plant that shoots spikes at you? And why does the plant not shoot spikes at literally anything else? Why me? Why, why the fuck does this plant have to exist? Why do I have to exist? Why can I not cut down the plant with a knife? Why, why is this design? And the same thing goes for like all of the enemies in this game. You got these huge seed rings underground called Reaper Leviathans, and all they do is fucking annoy you. They're always in this one area, so you're just gonna have to... I, I guess you're just gonna have to safe scum your way through it, because they, they might, like, one-shot your submarine, and then you, you can spend another fucking half an hour grinding up that submarine again. Oh, have great fun with that. Not to mention all the upgrades for your submarine, you're gonna have to 
replace individually because they just get destroyed along with it even though they're like really modular and they're basically just a little a little cork that you st stick on the submarine but whatever and they're destroyed so the fact that you can't use any kind of cool weapons against these fucking animals that are just such a huge pain in the ass it's just disgusting why don't you just make like a taser at least if you're gonna be non-violent you could still give me a fucking taser so i can make him fuck off because there's a stasis rifle but that doesn't do anything the stasis rifle just freezes them in, in place and i haven't tried the propulsion gun but i'm sure that's shit too so the stasis rifle just freezes them in like a bubble and then they come right at you again why don't you use something that hurts them so that they fuck off why would you just freeze them with a sci-fi bubble? That's so stupid. <laughs> Alright, next point. There's a compass, which is, by the way, completely useless. And not a map. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe other people have more of a use for a compass than I do. But what use is a compass without a map? Tell me that. I don't understand it. And it, it's completely stupid. Why isn't there a map? Why don't you make it so you can put like, like map drones or something, or some kind of scanners that you can place in the wall, and then whenever you're near them, you you know where you are or in relation to them. I mean, I know there's no satellites because because of story, but you could make mapping like I I, I don't know. I think mapping beacons is what I'm trying to say. There should be. I mean, there's beacons which are great for mapping, but there should be, there should be a minimap in this game, and there should be sensors that draw in your minimap. You just put them in a wall, and then they sense you when you're near them, and they should form a grid that you can build a map, so you can know where the fuck you are, and where you've been, and where you haven't been. That would be so good if that was a feature. You could just map the entire, the, the entire area. That would be great. And it wouldn't even be overpowered because you'd still have no idea of where the underground caves would be. Which are extremely hard to find, by the way. <laughs> Alright, well, back to inventory management. Here we go. Don't you love that? In fact, it's back to tool management again, but this is a separate point that I've written here. So when you have your inventory, you have a tool in your inventory, and you click on that tool, what do what you think would happen if you click on a tool in the inventory? I mean, just think of the most stupid thing that could happen if you clicked on a tool in your inventory. And then, write in the comments what you think that would be. And I'm gonna blow your mind because it's gonna be even worse. I mean, un unless you wrote down it drops the tool and you're gonna have to find it. It's not, it's, it's worse. Because... It, it put, if you double click a, a, a tool in your inventory, it puts it in the first quick select slot. Which means that it shuffles all other quick select slots by one slot. So if you've set them up to be one, two, three, three being the knife, two being the flashlight, one being the sea glide, then they're all, they're all plus one now. So you're basically gonna be fucked if you, if you wanna use the same key for the same thing every time, unless you specifically avoid double-clicking things in your inventory. And, of course, can I even tell you how many things are wrong with that? Okay, what should happen, if you weren't retarded, would be that you just give me the fucking tool in the hand and leave alone my quick select slots. That's what would happen in a sensible game, right? But in this game, obviously not, because apparently you're not allowed to have more than five tools handy, right? But now it, it shoveled all your other things. It, it's not even... It's not even got a, its dedicated slot in the quick select. No, it's... I mean, if, if it was like slot five, and then it's, the, it's that slot that, that you've double-clicked, and that's the slot five, that would be somewhat better. But it's the first slot, and it shuffles all the other slots. It's just so stupid. I'm not even sure it, it takes out the tool. I, well, I don't know. It probably does. Well, either way, it, it sucks and it's... No, actually, it doesn't take it out. It just puts it... In, and then you gotta press 1 to take it out. Why? Just... Don't you think me double-clicking it was enough indication to take it out? 
God! <laughs> Jesus. Alright, further problems with inventory management that are unrelated to tools. Yes, that's right, there's so many more problems with inventory management. You'd think that a game about surviving and managing your inventories would have good inventory management, but no, not this one. Okay, so you can craft things by bringing materials to your fabricator, right? So you bring a piece of metal salvage to your, your fabricator and it turns it into four individual pieces of titanium that take up four slots, just as, like the salvage did. But now it's also wasted your time, right? Oh, but that's not the end of it. That's not the end of wasting your time. Because if you manage to collect ten of them, the, the fabricator will give you the, the option to, to make an ingot of this titanium. And... I mean, I, technically it looks like it's three ingots, but it's it's marked as one ingot. So I, I guess it's a cluster of three ingots. So basically you've got this, this ingot cluster now in your inventory, and it takes up one slot. Amazing, right? Oh, great, now we're finally getting somewhere, and the inventory space is not wasted anymore. Haha, <laughs> no! Because now the inventory is wasted even more. Because if ever, if ever you're going to need titanium, you're not gonna have it now because you've made ingots with it. So the only time you can you're gonna be able to use the ingots if if you make a single thing that takes ten titanium. Like if you make a submarine, you're gonna use ingots. But if you if you use the titanium to build your habitat, you're gonna be fucked because now the titanium isn't gonna you can't split your ingots into single titanium anymore, and you can't even split the, the three ingots that apparently you've made, that this the one item, you can't split them, you can't use, there's things that use five titanium and you can't use half an ingot for it, you can't use one of the ingots for it. It's so fucking stupid. So now, now you're gonna have to grind again if you wanna, you're gonna have to find more titanium now that you, now that you've made an ingot that you didn't need. And the, the fabricator shows you the one thing that you can craft, which is going to be often the ingot, because you've got all the all the titanium, so if you do that, you're going to waste your, your fucking titanium. Unless you, you're you saving up for a submarine, I guess. Which, by the way, you should do. The submarines are pretty good, but it, it's still really, really fucking bad for building bases. Because that means you're going to have to get like five titanium five or ten loose titaniums if you're gonna build more than one room and you're gonna have to go back and forth from from your from your depositories of of inventory because you're too stupid to use it to use the fucking ingots for it it it's so annoyingly stupid that it just it, it baffles me i really hope that they're gonna listen to this video and then they're gonna overhaul the whole game in in the ways that i outline here because because this game really does have a decent bit of potential and I got really immersed in the story despite the fact that everything was so incredibly painful to do. <sighs> so at first you, you got like no no air, you can stay underwater for a minute and then you, you make an air tank and you can stay underwater for longer and you're gonna upgrade your air tank. It's all fair and good and then you you build your submarine and everything's even better. By, by the way the sea glide that, that thing that you have in front of you, that takes up six inventory slots, despite the fact that it's the thing that moves you, which is completely stupid. Of course you're gonna have the fucking sea glide on you at all times. What did you think? Um, you think I wanna move slowly through the water full of predators? That's gonna be real fun. So basically you just could, you, you could just say that you don't have as much inventory space as even you have, because you're always gonna have that sea glide there. So, when I got the first submarine, it was really amazing. It allowed me to go so much further. You basically have infinite air in that for some reason. I don't know why they couldn't just give you a thing that, that gives you infinite air without the submarine, but okay, I guess it's just the submarine that has the ability to give you infinite air. I don't know why you even have air tanks. How, how big could this module be that makes infinite air? It's not gonna be bigger than an air tank, so why, why can't I have that on me, by the way? <sighs> But the submarine's good for multiple reasons. You can even have inventory slots on it. But unfortunately, the inventory slots on it are also terrible. <laughs> they're, they're, small. they're so small. They're so goddamn small, the inventory slots on it. 
<sighs> all right, so I'm gonna have a solution for how to fix all of the inventory slot problems later. But for now, I'm gonna keep talking about how shit it is currently. But let's go on about about general progression. So basically, you start out with with basically no air, and it's terrible. Then you make an air tank, and it's slightly less terrible. And then you make the submarine and the sea glide, and it's it's a lot better. So basically, you got like one or two hours where you when you're as a newbie, you're not gonna know what to do and you're not gonna think that the sea glide or the submarine is the thing you should be making at all costs. You're just gonna assume that the game has terrible stupid mechanics and that a submarine would not help you in any way because you you would probably just have to resurface for air just as often in a submarine, but apparently not. So it wasn't obvious to me that the game would get so much better once I made the the sea moth. The, the first submarine. I've got a lot of gripes about the other two, the sub the other submarine and the the other underwater vehicle, but I'll I'll tell you about that later. So basically, the first submarine, the tiny submarine, that shows you how good this game could be if it, it shows you all all the potential of this game that that are unfulfilled. So basically, it's it's small. It's relatively fast. It's not as fast as you when you have the sea glide, but it's it's still pretty fast and it's really fast compared to the other two fucking vehicles that you're gonna get. My god, they're so slow. <laughs> so you, you're gonna have a great time with this, this first submarine. You're gonna explore all the caves. You're gonna... You can go really deep with it too. There's really not that much point in, in the big submarine, and I, I, I guess not for exploration anyways, but it's got other uses that are really big, by the way, so... You should definitely make that big submarine at some point, but... It's it's really weird. So basically, the, f the first submarine is, is basically your number one vehicle, and it's always going to be your number one vehicle. The, the, the second submarine is not going to be an upgrade to your first submarine, it's going to be an upgrade to your base, surprisingly. There was a lot of great stuff there for exploration. You could go pretty pretty deep. You could find underwater swamps where, where there's like a, a poisonous a poisonous liquid that's apparently heavier than water that, that, that makes it look like a swamp and it's beautiful. And there's huge skeletons in it and then there's a, a, glaif, a, a, a cave full of glowing mushrooms. The caves are my favorite thing to explore, and uh, the first submarine is the way to explore them. The second submarine, not as much. Okay, so while we're talking about exploration, we're obviously going to talk about some parts of the story. There's going to be spoilers, but fuck it. Minor spoilers, I'll keep it minor. So basically, your your spaceship has crashed, and you've gone on a, on a, a life pod, and you've survived. And there's lots of other life pods that, that would have survived too. And you get m messages from people who have survived. And it, I, I, I don't know how to say this, but this is the biggest slap with a dick to your face that you, you'll ever get across in a video game. Because every single one of these life pods, they're empty. They all just sent out a distress call to you and as soon as you get to them, they're empty, they're dead. It's such a huge dick slap to the face, I don't even understand why why they would keep teasing you with these fucking life pods, only for them to be empty at all times. I just don't get it. How is it possible that they all died right after they sent the signal, but before you got to them, and then there's not even a corpse there? I mean, it's obvious that they've been extremely lazy and they didn't want to make any humanoid characters in this game, but why did you have to keep teasing at them? Why? And another thing, all these life pods, they've, they've been destroyed, right? They all got huge gaping holes in them. And therefore, I would assume that my life pod's gonna get destroyed at some point too, but no, not once. There's nothing that endangers your life pod. And, and that's why I, I didn't want to leave all my stuff on the life pod, because I assumed it, would gon it was going to get destroyed. So what I should have done is leave it all on the life pod, because the life pod is completely safe. It's the, the place where you're going to put your stuff. And even if you build a habitat, that's going to be completely safe too. 
By the way, don't you just love how this this airplane sounds exactly like a submarine? It's so it's so fitting to the scene. <laughs> Alright, so that's just one of the times where the game sends you the wrong messages about what you should and shouldn't be doing. Okay, so another, another spoiler here is that there's a disease on the planet, even though it's not a spoiler for long, you're gonna find out pretty quick. And your scanner says that you're infected with a disease, but it's just not affected you yet. It does that right away. And it's crazy, because now you're gonna be paranoid the entire time, which is stupid. You're just gonna waste time being paranoid. I guess that... That warrants, warrants being a horror game, but obviously, I mean, I guess it. I, I, I guess it wouldn't be that obvious. Actually, you'd think that that they would have made a mechanic where you actually could avoid being infected, because there is in fact like water that says it's been filtered, but there's still microorganisms in it, and there's water that that's slightly more annoying to produce. It says. It's free of microorganisms. So I assumed that you just had to cook your food really well and use that expensive water and and then I'd be fine, but no. Well, uh, it would have been too late anyways, but apparently it doesn't matter if you've been infected or not. You, you always have the disease. You always get the disease. And filtering the water is just a waste of time. You could just have used the... the the easy to make water that you get by by making a by by, by catching a single bladder fish and it filters water for you. You could have just used the bladder water all along, but no. Yeah, I, I used the expensive water. <laughs> so So I was paranoid all along and the game was telling me you better watch out, you're gonna get infected by this disease. But there's no the disease is fake. The disease is just a plot point. You're not gonna die from the disease. You're not gonna have any debuffs from the disease. The, the least they could have done would be to make it so you, you get like a debuff if you disease, so you actually have a, a reason to, to not be infected as much. And if you don't drink as much of the filthy water, you're gonna you're gonna be not infected for as you're not gonna be affected as much. That's what they should have done. But what they did is that you you just get. You just have this disease and then you do a story thing and then you cure the, the disease and there's no difference. There's no difference in gameplay and all this all this misleading descriptions about the water being filled with microorganisms, fuck it, doesn't matter. So there's a thing you can stop wasting your time with if you're gonna play this game. Don't worry about the expensive water or anything. Even though I guess it's still more water so it's not that bad but also fuck it. By the way, I didn't mention this earlier, but you, you really want to you really want to get these potato plants. They're a really good way to they they give you water as well as as food. So you're just going to want to make as many potatoes as you well, I guess you just need like five plants and then you're basically full water when you eat all the potatoes and then you you just plant the rest of the potatoes back in and you're fine and it does it, it's it's faster than cooking fish which is crazy because you fish you can eat raw but potatoes you can't eat raw and eating potatoes raw in real life would kill you but no not in this game i guess they've gotten past this part there's special potatoes that are not poisonous if you don't cook them imagine that <laughs> All right, so the, the game entirely has four bars, right? House, oxygen, water, food. And that sucks. It's stupid. Every one of the bars running out is going to kill you, and that sucks. And I wish they would just get rid of the fucking health bar. There's no point to the health bar. You can just chug health packs, and you get a lot of health packs for free, or for relatively cheap. So... There's no point in having health packs and a health bar. Just make it so you regenerate automatically and you don't see your health bar. It, it, I know it would sound like that would make it more casual, but actually this isn't punishing. This is just annoying because you can store as many health packs as you want. You can bring as many, it just takes up inventory slots. So really it's just another nuisance. It's no point having these health bars. And in fact you can just... You can just take lots of damage and you'll be fine. 
just bring health packs. It's, it's not even challenging, it's just stupid. Alright, next point, we're finally getting to the big submarine. God, imagine that. So, basically, the game has caves, the caves go really deep. They go deep enough to a point where they're... Where they're just... There's too much crushing distance, so you, your mini submarine's not gonna... It, it's gonna get crushed if you go too deep. Which is, of course, stupid, but whatever. So now you're gonna build the big submarine. So what what do you think the big submarine's gonna be? Do you think it's gonna be twice as the size of the of the, the normal submarine? <laughs> oh no, it's gonna be 20 times the size of the normal submarine. And you can dock the normal submarine onto the sub uh, onto the big submarine. But unfortunately, that means it's extremely unwieldy and unwieldy, and it's the worst thing that you could possibly imagine for exploring claustrophobic undersea caverns. It's the worst thing. It doesn't even need to be that big. That the big screw in the in the end is just a complete design flaw. It could be way shorter, and it would still screw as well. <laughs> it's just completely taking the piss. It's like, oh, you, you, sure would be terrible if you if you got a submarine as big as the planet. Well, here you go. It's half the planet. It's so fucking stupid. You don't even expect to it to be so big. I was so pissed when it, when I got this submarine at first. It was like, no, why is it so big? And it moves so slow. But the thing about the the big submarine is that it's basically like a habitat. It's got all the tools that you're gonna need on a habitat. Well, almost. We're gonna get to the one tool that you can't have on the submarine, which is real shit, by the way. So, basically you can build closets. I don't... What are they called? Like, the big... The big things where you can store stuff in. I guess they're called closets, but they're like... Not built into the wall or anything. They're freestanding cupboards or something. You can, you can stuff it full of those, and then you can, you can use the robot suit, which you can also build, by the way. Uh, which is even slower. I, I guess it's like the... It's it's smaller, but it's really heavy. And really annoying to pilot and really slow. But I guess it's got... Nah, I, I guess the robot suit really sucks, actually. I, I don't think there's any redeeming quality about the robot suit. But basically, you can use the submarine and you can go into the robot suit that you've stored in the submarine. You can only store either the, the other submarine or the robot suit, by the way, not those. But it doesn't matter that much. Because the, the, the submarine's fast anyways. The, the, the small ones, you can sip around with that one. So anyways, I got the robot suit in there so I can finally go and collect resources really well because I, I can store them on the submarine. I can, I can store a lot of stuff on the submarine and then I can send out the robot suit to have to, to drill into the big resources. And, well, it, it's probably the most effective way to, to, to get the resources, but it's also really annoying, I guess, and slow. It takes forever to drill into this big resource deposits, and you had to unlock the drill arm as well, separate from the, from the prawn suit. So... Well, basically, the game just doesn't respect your time. Everything's so slow. I, why the fuck would you make it so slow to drill into these resources? Just skip, skip the time. I don't care. You don't, you don't fucking show me taking a shit either. You skip the parts where the character takes a shit. Why don't you skip the parts where the character drills into the stone for for a whole minute? So yeah, just speed that part up. Fucking, don't be stupid. Why, why, why you gotta waste my time, you stupid shit game? <laughs> Alright, so the submarine is pretty cool, but it's really slow. And I think I may have gone the wrong way the first time, but I, I guess I just glitched my way through the cave that was too tight for it. It turns out there's another entrance to the cave that's slightly better, but it would have been really hard to find. It was pretty crazy. I, I guess there's... I guess it was pretty good though, being able to go into that cave, but the thing is that the big submarine, everything is so fucking dark, and the, the spotlights on the big submarine, they're really bad, they're not, 
not strong enough. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm just faster with the small submarine and then I can just go closer to the wall so I can actually see what the fuck's going on. But with the big submarine, you don't see shit. It's so fucking dark and so fucking slow and so fucking hard not to run into the walls. But it's fine because it's not gonna explode instantly when you hit the wall, so it's pretty resilient. In fact, it's the big, the big sea dragons, they rarely get you anyways in there. In fact, they, they're, they're like completely useless against the, the big submarine most of the time. <laughs> and then you have to put out the fires that, that, that have started inside the submarine because it's been so damaged. It's pretty crazy stuff. It's, it's actually pretty cool, but it's just too bad because... Yeah, because it's just so unwieldy, I guess, but I, I don't know, maybe that was just the whole point, but if there was an intermediate submarine that could go de slightly deeper than the, than the tiny one, then it would be great, and it would be way better, so I don't know. I don't know what to think. I really love the submarine, but I also, I didn't like it at first, and it could have been better, but there's not a lot of story to go around anyway, so... Once you go down there, you can pretty much complete the story immediately. And then if you've got the big submarine, you probably will have... ...will have done the same thing as me, a stock up on all the resources, so it was easy to just build the, the thing that ends the game. But then I loaded this another save game, so the game didn't end. Aha, and I kept playing and I kept building underwater things. <laughs> it was mildly fun. I, I got to use all of the features that I didn't have to use to finish the game. Made, made a big aquarium where I, where I, I, I put the, the most the most delicious fish and made it multiply. And then I put in all the, the crazy other fish that I could put into. And they didn't kill each other because it was some kind of pacifism experiment. So that was all cool, I guess. It was all non-essential. Non it's too bad because there's no no way to cure the disease you, you only cure it in yourself you don't cure it in I, I wish there was like a way to to vaccinate the whole thing and to, to vaccinate the whole the whole ecosystem I, w I wish that was another quest line where you could like cure the disease for, for good but right now you can just end the story and then that's it the story's gone there's nothing further than where you can do anything more <laughs> So that's something. Alright, well, we're, st we're still not done, surprisingly, with the tedium. <laughs> still more, more tedium to be explored and more glitches even. I haven't even started on the glitches anyways. Right, so here we go. So, you know the submarines, they're real great. But you know what would be better if they had AI? If you could call your small sub submarine to you, that would be really good. That should be a feature. Even though I suppose you could, like, take damage and get destroyed. Hmm. I guess it would have to avoid danger or something. But that would be great if you could have it follow you. <laughs> so let's finally talk about inventory management then. By the way, oh yeah, there's a few things that are still not terrible. There's like a few things that are complete waste of time. Like you've got floating... I looked it up, they call it lockers, the, the, the things out instead of closets. But I guess you also got floating lockers, opposed to the lockers that you put in your... in your habitat. So the floating lockers, they're the biggest piece of shit that you could ever imagine. So basically, you, you set them down and you can put stuff in them, and then they, they stick in place. Which sounds decent, but then you can't... You can't use them after... Well, I mean, you, it's basically like having a locker there, but the problem is that they also take up four inventory slots if you want to carry them around. You can't carry them if they're full. So you're already gonna ham-fist your inventory by using those fucking lockers. And then if you have... In fact, the, f the whole thing that they exist really is distracting because the the way you should be storing things is you should build a habitat. But what you do is, what what what, what I guess you, you would think to do would be to to make like four of those lockers, and then 
saw your stuff there, but they're, they're small lockers. They're way smaller in inventory than you, and they're, they're pretty stupid. So you, you got four lockers outside of your life pod, and, you, and they're floating there, not doing anything. But the whole point of having floating lockers would be so you would stop being stupid finally and pull them behind you. You would think you could just pull them behind you, but you can't. They, they're just in place. So, so basically they're exactly the same as storing stuff on your life pod, and it's, it's pretty stupid, pretty unhappy with it. And when you build a habitat, you're gonna have those large lockers, they have as much inventory as you, finally. But obviously that's still not enough. Why, why the fuck, why, why aren't there bigger ones? Give me a big dumpster that I can put stuff in, that would be way better. And you don't even see what's in the lockers from the outside. So there's all, it's all just guessing, it's, it's all stupid and it's all pointless. In the end I had my submarine loaded up with like 20 lockers and they all had like one thing in them. It was full with one thing each. And it was such a pain in the ass having to get stuff all the time. I, I would remember where, where I put the stuff, but then I still have to get in the submarine, climb up the ladder, Go to the room with the lockers, take the stuff out of the locker, remember how much I need it, go back out and like build whatever I wanted to. It's so fucking stupid. And it would be relatively easy to fix this, you know? It would be relatively easy to fix this. <clears throat> so the way you would do it would be to have it so that there's only one inventory on the submarine, or like in, in the habitat. You can increase the inventory size by building lockers, but you don't have to go to the individual lockers to see what's where, okay? You know how much better that would be? I mean, I guess. Yeah, no, it would definitely be better in every way. I mean, I guess you wouldn't have the ability to block out stuff you don't need, but it would be so much more convenient just have a whole list of all the things that are in the habitat and to have have them at your disposal. That would be so good. And furthermore, if you could craft things without having to take them out of the lockers, that would be great too. Because if you want to craft something, you're going to empty your inventory into the lockers, then you can take out the stuff from the lockers that you need to craft, and then go craft, and it takes like five seconds to craft this thing, and it's all a huge waste of time, and it's it's back to the, the point that I made about taking a shit. The game doesn't show you having to take a shit, because it assumes that you realize that you take a shit, but it's just off camera. It's like taking a shit! You just do it! Or you explode! You realize that you take a shit, but it's just off camera. Why don't you make it so I, in I, I manage the inventory off camera? Why don't you just make it so all the lockers, or all the stuff from the, from the habitat is, is there in the list? And and it's just there, and I can just use it. I can craft it w with stuff that's in the in the habitat, and it just assumes that I that my character picks up the stuff and puts it in the, the fabricator without me having to do it manually. Wouldn't that be great? Because there's no challenge to it. There's no point in, in doing all this pointless busy work. Just make it so I can craft with all those materials in the habitat or in the submarine or anything. You know how much better that would be. You could just build more more lockers if you need, and then you wouldn't have to, to sort things in the lockers. Because if you build a new locker, then you're going to take out all the stuff from one locker, put it in another locker, and then you, you're going to choose what which one of the resources you're going to put in this new locker, and then you're going to have a whole locker for one resource. And, God, it's so stupid and also pointless. If only it would just have like one big cargo where you can scroll up and down and you, you see all the cargo in it. That would be so good. And when you have the small, the small submarine, you can put like three, three different lockers on the side of it. But then you gotta get out and use the lockers, and it's so stupid. You can't even do it while you're inside. Why don't you just make it so you can have access to all, all the lockers that are in the submarine, the small one, well, the big one too. From the inside, you can obviously access everything in the big one from the inside, because the, the big one's just basically one big floating house. 
So the big ones got slightly better management, but then it's still terrible because you're gonna make a million lockers. <laughs> it's pretty wild. So there we go. That was it. That, oh, that wasn't it. Uh, but, but that was that, that's my idea of how to fix the the inventory. I've seen this in out of all the games in the search where you have a, an inventory like that, and it's great. And in this one, it, it's this inventory in this game, Subnautica, is just so bad, and it could be done so much better. I mean, obviously this would take a moderate amount of work, but I think it'd be pretty fine. I think it'd be... it shouldn't take more than a week, I guess. Just make one big locker that contains all the stuff from, from one thing. It would be so good. And then, while... how about another thing? While I'm near the habitat, I have access to it. I don't even need to be in it, or, or near the submarine. So I wouldn't have to go back and forth from inside the submarine, up the ladder, to the lockers, get all the stuff I get, get out of there, Forget what you what you were trying to build. Go back up. Pick up the shit. Oh no, it's in the wrong locker. Oh no, I'm gonna build this shit. Why don't you just make it so I can build it? Why doesn't it just bring me the stuff automatically? My God, it's this is taking a shit all over again. We don't need to see all the tedious work that goes into building a habitat. Just fucking skip it. Just just pretend like the character can do it off camera. To skip forward to when he's built it. Who gives a shit? No one wants to see this shit being taken. No one wants to see this tedious work that goes into building this stuff. <laughs> oh god. Uh, another thing is, there's one thing, it's called a moon pool. It's basically a, a room that's that that's open from below and you can you can put the small submarine and the robot suit and dock it in the moon pool. And it's a completely pointless room because you can just just stick your, your things there. You can just put them anywhere. You can park your, your fucking submarine outside. There's no no reason why you would dock it. It's not even well done because you can glitch through it and it's a real pain in the ass, the moon room. But it requires you to build this pointless room because only that way you can upgrade your submarine and you would think yeah that makes sense it's docked so that's why you build it but no all it does is make it so you can build a special kind of fabricate so that fabricates upgrades to your submarine but you still plug them in like a like a little usb stick into the submarine so there's no point why, why this fabricator would only be in the moon room it's all just more waste of time you gotta build this whole expensive room it's this specialized room that's more expensive than anything else, just so you can upgrade, just so you can have this fabricator in it that upgrades your vehicles. It's so stupid. <sighs> yep, that's that's too bad, isn't it? Oh, another thing, by the way, life pods. They should be like, they should be connected to your base. You should be able to to make it so <clears throat> that the life pods are a part of your base. You should be able to attach rooms to your life pod because as it is I just built a base outside of the life pod and I had to get back force from the life pod to the base all the time and it was stupid and then you meet you find so many other life pods that are destroyed and you can't repair them you can't salvage them and they're useless why didn't you make it so you could salvage the life pods and you can build a habitat with life pods instead of rooms that would be so cool why didn't you do that and then I wouldn't have this fucking problem where the the life pod is outside of my habitat and I have to, to go into the water and it's gonna lag because the water loads for a second every time you enter it and... Oh god. If only you would have done it that way. Well, I, this, this one may be a nitpick, but I would have, would have liked life pods to be parts of my habitat. That would have been great. Yeah, well, that's all the tedium. So let's go to the fun glitches. Oh boy. <sighs> Such fun. Okay, so... Uh, <clears throat> there's invisible walls everywhere. It's like... The colliders in this game are terrible. There's invisible walls. You, you, your prawn suit can get stuck on a rock. You, you can get stuck 
in in a huge invisible wall in the Aurora. The Aurora, by the way, the ship that, that you came in, the, the crashed ship, it's the biggest piece of shit ever. It's so poorly designed, there's only one entrance. And and it's like completely open, but then the, the parts of it that you can you can go to, they're they're so rare. And it's just this this huge low poly piece of shit that, that has like really shit to collide and you get stuck in. One time I one time I drowned because because there was a an invisible wall as large as as a, as a fucking submarine that I couldn't get through, and I saw the water surface above me and I was stuck. It was so bad. <laughs> it was real bad. They they gotta spend a lot of time on that that Aurora spaceship and make it less shit, I guess. <laughs> and then there's always this. This Reaper Leviathan hanging out in outside of it. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Okay, in general, la walking on land can be really bad when you have a low frame rate. Because I was recording the video, so I have low frame rate. It ran f slightly better if not, but when I had low frame rate, then I, the, the land would be really glitchy. I would be bopping up and down wildly, and it was really shit. And that's a thing that could be fixed. I guess you just gotta play test the game at low frame rate or, or like uh, just play test it while while it's lagging from from another reason you should try it all right well that, that one may have been a nitpick lava lava larvas the, they're the annoying pieces of shit that that get stuck to your submarine and you can't you can't get rid of them easily and it's usually hot so when you go outside your screen's covered in in fucking Disgusting lava jam. When you, you, you're trying to 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 cut them off with the knife, but that doesn't kill them. And then when you when you've done that, sometimes they glitch into your submarine. Look at this. I don't know if I found the footage for it, but it, they were they were all over the submarine. It was fucking retarded, and I couldn't get rid of them. I guess they after a bunch of saving and loading, they finally despawned. But it was really shit. They probably could could glitch you up even. They, they probably could like be so much in the way that you that you can't get to the exit of the submarine. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Yeah, you gotta watch out for that. And then there's a really annoying bug when when you're trying to open lockers but you're too far away, so he just holds his the cooler the tool that he's currently holding to his head as if it was a, a phone and he's trying to to display the the hut of the of the locker, but it doesn't. It just holds the tool up, and then you can't move your mouse. And it's only solved by you pressing escape, which shouldn't be a thing because escape is what opens the menu. So that was, but I'm sure they'll probably have fixed that one by the time. By the time they hear of this video, <laughs> and then there's underwater plants that are really solid, even though they look like they're. They're, they should be soft, and then your submarine gets stuck in a your big submarine, and it's really shit. And well, they should just make it so those plants like get destroyed or something instead of them. Or maybe they just bend, or maybe they don't have a collide or anything. Just, just get rid of them. Just make it so they don't hold up my submarine, please. <laughs> And the worst bug of all is the sea moss, the, the fast submarine. Like 90% of the time where you, well, maybe 10% of the time when you exit it while, while it's still running, you, you get hit because you're a retard and you like jump out in front of it and then you get hit. But it doesn't make sense because you're the same speed as the ship so you wouldn't get hit. It's just stupid. That bug shouldn't exist. Just put me behind the ship or something, I don't know. It's just stupid. It's it's so dumb. Every time I lose health to it, and then it's, I got, and then the health doesn't regenerate because there's a pointless health point in this game. Ah, oh, god. <laughs> that being said, I had a lot of fun with the game, but it's just really jarring how much, how many bad design choices are in it. They should fix it. They should fix it all. And I've made this huge fucking video about this stupid game. And oh my god, this game, this video is. Pretty long, but the game's much longer. It took me like 30 hours to complete, and then it probably would have taken me 20 if I hadn't been stupid. But, well, if I had known what to do, I guess. But who would have known? 
I guess the trick is just build the, the big submarine as fast as possible. But then again, there was no point in completing it fast because the ending was kind of anticlimactic anyways. Even though it was pretty cool, but then it still... It doesn't really do much, I guess. I mean, it doesn't... I, I guess you just you can just use that machine you built to get the, the ending cutscene, but it doesn't really do anything for the gameplay. <laughs> you can just reload it again before you did that. All right, well, subscribe for more. I'm sorry for this huge rant, but maybe, maybe you enjoyed it as much as I hated this game. <laughs> Bye.